Hello, and thanks for joining us. My name is John Adams. I'm the Executive Director of Business Development here at DMP uh, with oversight of the X1 product line. And we are thrilled that you're joining with us to talk a little bit more about the X1 product line and some recent additions that we have to it that are gonna help you expand your business using X1. So throughout the duration of the webinar, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask those in the question and answer box. We do have a team of people that are standing by to answer those questions for you in real time throughout the duration of this webinar. So I'm joined here by Kevin McDonald. He is our X1 sales specialist for the East, as well as Quentin Booth. He is our X1 sales specialist for the West. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, thanks for having me. And so what we wanna do is spend a little bit of time going over X1, what is it? What have we added um, as far as the feature set goes and how you can benefit from that, how it's different than the other products in the market as far as cloud-based access control. But then also Kevin's gonna spend some time actually showing you how easy it is to set up in dealer admin, but then also what that looks like for your customer. So that user interface is extremely important. That's what you're selling to the customer. So we're gonna show you what that looks like in the virtual keypad browser but everything that we show you is also able to be set up in the virtual keypad app. So again, we're really excited for the time to spend with you. That being said, let's go to Quentin. Quentin, let's, let's tell us about X1. Yeah, thanks, John. Now we're gonna talk about the X1. It's our cloud managed access control platform. It's standalone access, all managed in virtual keypad. It is a single door controller. It's meant to control one door of access on a site. It supports two readers, an in and an out reader, as well as your door hardware and a door position switch and request to exit device. There is some onboard functionality with a customization of one input and two custom outputs. So we have a lot of end users that are utilizing these and integrating with fire systems and then using those outputs for uh, custom relays, uh, thermostats, lights, etc. But here's where we get into the really cool part of the X1 is our communication types. We have network and Wi-Fi capability built on to each and every panel. So this allows you to configure these to whatever your end user site is capable of utilizing. So for example, in a building like where we're at, we're coming to you live from our studio here in Springfield, Missouri, where we manufacture the X1s as well as all the products we make. But we can have some doors that are literally connected over a network, mm -hmm. but then we might have other doors in our manufacturing plant where we don't have a network job. They can be connected over Wi-Fi, yeah. but when you log in, it's just all your doors, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, it's gonna be one site, yep. Nice, so you can mix and match every single door just to meet the needs of the application. But then, and this is where it gets really exciting, Yep. we've got another option. Yeah, so we do have cellular capability. So we can do standalone cell with the X1 device. So just take a look at what that means for your customer. As long as there is power at the door at any location, you can add on that cell module and have a standalone door of access that is functioning solely off of cellular. So you can do uh, network with cell backup, standalone cell, but the cool thing is you can manage all those doors from one site. So you might have a couple of network doors, a couple of Wi-Fi doors, maybe one individual cell door, but your end user configuration and management is all gonna be managed through one individual site. So this kind of opens the door of opportunity for you to go out to customers that might have remote locations where there's no network or they have a couple buildings on one site that do have network and you can set everything up but then one building either on that site or maybe a different campus that doesn't have network uh, but again and you touched on it but the ability to do access control on any door that has electricity that's great mm -hmm. i mean that this is parking garages this is restrooms at parks. Uh, this is all sorts of facilities where they didn't have network available, but now they can have full access control. So no yeah. need to add uh, cradle points or any other thing that can provide connectivity at a very expensive rate. You can just bring in an X1 at a very low price rate uh, and have access control on that door. So yeah. sorry to interrupt, I'll let you keep on, no, but no, we can't stress that part enough. But yeah, also on the cellular capability, we do have the ability to also add network with cellular backup. So all this is managed through virtual keypad, the app and the browser. If you have an end user that never wants to lose that connectivity to be able to unlock, lock or view live events from their, their app, they can simply do network with cellular backup. So keep that in mind for an option as well. 
Now continuing on with the reader protocols, we support Weekend or OSDP with the X1s. Those are gonna be an option that you select in dealer admin. So it's not a different part number for a Weekend or OSDP X1. It is simply built onto all the panels and it's just uh, an option you select. So that means you yeah. can just stock one part. Like exactly. I don't need stock to one have part. one part for my OSDP customers and one part for those that don't mm -hmm. want that level of encryption. I just get one part, I exactly. keep that inventoried and yep. I can go install that based off their needs. Yep, keeps That's everything great. seamless. Yeah. Um, continuing on, events. We store all the events in virtual keypad. We store 365 days of events there. However, in the event that network communication or Wi-Fi signal is lost, we do have a 12,000 event buffer on each and every individual panel. So what that means for the end user, they're never gonna lose the event tracking capability on their system. So they're always gonna have the integrity of their access control system, even if that network connection is lost. Of course, hopefully you're doing the network with cell backup option and providing that for them, but we do have that event buffer built on. Card formats, we also support eight custom card formats per site. So this means we, we plan on you using the X1 for takeovers. If you have a customer that already has credentials, prox cards, whatever it may be on a system, you can simply take that card format and implement it onto our new site and dealer admin and they can hang on to those old cards and those will work on our system. Continuing with some of the key features and really the programming and redundancy of the X1, uh, we want you to know that the system is always going to fully function. What that means for your end user is 10,000 credentials are going to be stored locally on each and every X1 panel, 99 schedules, and 999 groups. So every single door can hold 10,000 credentials. Mm -hmm. So when you log into the virtual keypad and your user adds credentials, we're not just adding it to a cloud. It's not reaching out to us every time someone swipes a card to find out if they should go in. Those codes are all loaded locally in every door. So that's 10,000 credentials per door, 99 schedules per door. Uh, I'll let you talk about some of the more specs, but mm -hmm. what we really want you to fully understand is that when you add anything through Virtual Keypad, it's downloading into all the doors. So if you did have a network only system and no cell backup and their network totally goes out, everything continues to work like normal. All of that programming, all of that user information, everything is stored per door. So we continue to know, you know, who needs to come in and out and it lets those appropriate people in. It records all the events. It follows any locking and unlocking schedule. So even in a catastrophic network outage, the system continues to behave like normal. That's where we talk about that full mm -hmm. edge redundancy. Everything is also stored locally at each door. Yep, I'll let you exactly. continue. Yeah. And to touch on what groups are, you might be familiar with some of the other panels. The user permission levels are profiles. And X1, those user permission levels are actually gonna be grouped, so it's a little bit different verbiage mm -hmm. on the X1 system. But you can assign up to 32 groups per user. If you have a, an end user, an employee that has a bunch of different permission levels, you want them to be able to access a plethora of doors, you can assign that user to up to 32 groups. Once again, events are viewable in virtual keypad, a year's worth of events there, and we have that same 12,000 event buffer on each and every panel on the system. Last point here, our configuration on these. We wanted these X1s to be applicable, applicable on big enterprise settings. You can configure these up to a thousand doors per individual site. So you can add a ton of doors at different locations. If you have a campus, a couple of different buildings that are separated out throughout a campus, you can manage those X1s from one individual site. So that means that you know, one, you can scale, you can have as many doors as you need, and a site doesn't have to have a geographic boundary. It can be a bunch of doors in this building, a bunch of doors in this building, a bunch of doors in this building. And the bottom line is that with X1, none of those doors have to be, no wire runs back to some sort of home run scenario. You put it at each door, they act individually, all managed through the virtual keypad. So this means that you can save a ton of labor because I'm not having to run a wire back to every single door. The X1s will talk amongst each other on the local network, or if it's over, over cell, they'll communicate through our servers. So it's like having one system. When they log in, it's one system, but you didn't have to run any wire from one door to the next or back to some sort of home run location. Now, now that I've said that about running wires back, we do have a product 
that's really nice for scaling, but it's even better for takeovers. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so that's our X1. Once again, great for kind of mitigating the wire runs and putting that device at the edge. However, we also offer an eight door controller in our X18. And we'll get into that here. Our X18, it's a it's going to be great for system takeovers where those wires are already home run back to a central location, potentially new construction where wire runs aren't that big of an issue, or maybe you want to have all of your panels in one central location. There is an X1 including the enclosure with the X18 and then seven door controllers that are mounted and wired back to that X1. A cool part of the X18 is our capability to have one communication path for up to eight doors. So um, what that means for you is when installing these, you need one network connection, one Wi-Fi connection, or one cellular connection. So it also simplifies that process uh, for eight doors of access. There is a power supply included in the X18 enclosure. That's gonna be a five amp power supply, as well as a transformer. Go that's ahead. one thing yeah. to talk about. You know, you're totally right. But that's one thing to talk about is that with the X1, you're putting a controller out at the door that is also going to provide power to the reader and the door locking hardware. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a separate power supply. The X1 will put out an amp and a half of power to power your readers and your door hardware. So no need for that additional cost. And then on the X18, we've got a power supply built in there that is enough to provide power out to eight doors. So again, no need for separate power supplies. And it's worth mentioning that it's all UL listed for access control. Yep, absolutely. As well with the X18, as you can see on the slide in the enclosure here, everything comes mounted just as you see here and wired. So this really makes it easier for your techs to install these. They don't have to snap any of these boards in place or wire those together. So we wanted this access system to be, uh, to be as efficient as possible. Once again, they're configurable up to a thousand doors per site or 125 X18s. And you can mix and match these X18s with X1s however you see fit for your end users. So if I have an application where I'm taking over some doors, but then we've got additional doors or an additional door in another site, I can add an X18, bring all of that stuff that's already wired back to an electrical closet to one location, but then I can have a separate X1 in another part of the building, separate X1 in maybe a separate building. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, we've already talked about it, but they can be connected over seller network. Bottom line is when your customer logs in, it's all just a bunch of doors. They yep. just manage their doors. Exactly. Uh, so you can mix and match. You don't have to make the decision uh, of one or the other. You can mix and match on mm -hmm. that. And that's the X18. And now we'll get into a product that we launched for our customers who have elevators, but they wanna control all of those from the same platform. So that is going to be our X1 elevator control. The X1 elevator control, it comes standard with an X1 in the enclosure that supports 10 floors of elevator control out of the box. We can, however, expand these up to 90 floors with expansion modules that you will simply purchase and snap into the enclosure and connect back to the original X1. The really cool part about this is you're gonna be paying monthly for one individual X1 for up to 90 floors of elevator access. So we wanted to simplify that for you for billing purposes, but also give you a robust option to simplify your elevator control access. So what you're saying is that um, whether I'm doing 10 floors or 90 floors, mm -hmm. that monthly rate for that per door control doesn't increase. Exactly. So I can do 90 floors for the same amount per month as I could do yeah. 10. Absolutely. Nice, nice. Yep. Well, sorry to interrupt, I'll let you keep going. These are gonna be set up exactly how you would set up those doors or your regular X1 doors. They're just gonna be set up in dealer admin. So you'll take the serial from your X1, put that into dealer admin, and we will automatically upload and populate those 10 floors of eleva elevator access. Granular floor permissions. So what that means for you, these are basically gonna be assigned and done exactly how you would assign a door access to user permissions. And then floor access is gonna be configured the exact same way um, by schedule. So when do you want these elevators to be accessible to your users, uh, to your employees? It's gonna be done exactly how you would in an X1 system with just doors. Nice. So I think the thing that we really wanna emphasize is that, and Kevin's gonna show this here in a few minutes, is that the elevator control is the easiest setup for you as a dealer 
as well as the easiest management for your customers in the industry. We put a ton of emphasis on making sure that it is very, very easy to manage. Uh, and again, on any given X1, you can go up to 90 floors. So you can limit people to certain floors or certain floors during certain times. You can manage that however you'd like. And you can do it from anywhere. You can do it from the virtual keypad browser or you can do it from the virtual keypad app. Uh, so you're really putting a lot of control into the hands of your customer, but also making it really easy for them when they do need to add a new credential or make a, a change to the accessibility of that elevator. So that's a little bit about the elevator controller. What yeah. about any other products? Yeah, so we have also added the ability to expand outputs for an individual X1. So that is going to be our X1 output module. And each output module comes with 10 relays per module. We have a lot of customers who want maybe an access granted or denied event to trigger a variation of different relays. This allows you to easily expand those relays to make a more robust access control system with your X1 platform. These are gonna connect back to um, an X1 or an X18, so that's how you will configure these. And outputs are gonna be customized and named in virtual keypad to assign those custom roles to the system. So it's really easy end user configuration in there. You're gonna go into virtual keypad and assign custom names to these relays. And Kevin, we'll show you guys that in a moment. So you're saying that basically I can almost have any action, whether that's an access granted or an access or a door forced, trigger an output that mm -hmm. turns some lights on or a, a, a lockdown can yeah. even trigger that. So we've set it up so that whether that event, event is triggered through the app or whether it's an event that's triggered because of an event on a door, even though that event was on this door, I can trigger an output that's connected to this door. That's what we talk about in that site-wide configuration. Exactly, correct? yep. Nice. Everything's yeah. gonna interact together. Nice. Anything else to say about the uh, X1 output module? X1 output module, um, you can expand these to up to 90 as well nice. per one individual X1. So any single X1 can have, so I, I don't have to have a, a bunch of these connected to different X1s. I can run them all back to one yeah. or mm -hmm. I can spread them out to the closest X1. But even if the, the event I want to trigger isn't part of that X1, I can still trigger it. Yep, exactly. Very easy to manage. Nice. Well, Perfect. Quentin. I think that's it for the hardware. I think yeah, those are the things you wanted to cover. That's our so, hardware portion. Cool. Well, thank you very much for sharing all mm -hmm. of that. Um, so now what we want to do, since we've talked so much about the hardware and we've said several times how easy it is to manage, we want to actually show you that. So Kevin McDonald is actually going to start with showing you a little overview of how easy it is to set up an X1. And that's done through our dealer admin portal. So as a dealer of X1, you have access uh, to the dealer admin portal to set up and configure your doors. And then he's gonna show you what the customer interface looks like. Correct. He's also gonna touch on the fact that you can actually help manage the systems for your customer if you need to via the dealer admin portal. So Kevin, let's let's start that. That's right, thank you, John. So I'm gonna be showing how easy it is for you as the dealer to be able to set up these doors, set up these elevators and outputs, and then we'll go over virtual keypad as to how easy it is for your customer to be able to manage all of those doors and their users and, and their elevator control. So let's go ahead and start with dealer admin here. So you would create your customer as normal and then go down to your system. So I'm in my X1 demo E system. As I scroll down, you'll see your doors. So as, it's as easy as clicking the plus icon next to doors, and then you type in that serial number that is found inside of your X1. So real quick, that's a good opportunity for, touch, for us to touch on one thing. When you connect an X1, whether that's over network or cell, as soon as it's got connectivity, it immediately starts tunneling out to us. So it's calling us. We just don't know who to associate it with. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can just log into dealer admin and enter that MAC address and we say, oh, it's already reaching out to us. Right. But also this means that your customer doesn't need to open up any ports for inbound connection. It's creating an outbound persistent connection to our servers that's over a VPN tunnel that's AES encrypted. So a ton of level of security, but also you don't have to open up any ports inbound. So that's why you can just enter that serial number and we start programming it. That's right. And so as soon as you do that, it will bring up this following screen here. So you type in your serial number, and this is where all the programming is done for your doors. So you start off by naming your door, set up a strike time, the strike delay, and then you choose that reader protocol. So as Quentin was saying, you only need to use dealer admin to configure that, no separate part numbers. You choose Wigan or OSDP. Now with version 213, we come out with the onboard output names. So now you can customize the names on both of the 
outputs that are found within every single X1. So I can go and give this a name. And then if you're enabling this X1 with a fire system, you will enable fire zone and then you can set up the X1 as a fire exit. Next, you can include in lockdown if that's something that you're needing. And then if you have any door sensors as well, you can easily enable that, set your prop time, and if you'd like to receive any door force messages as well. And then finally, if you're using a Rex, you can enable that there. But that's it. That's all you need to do when so adding your door. So at that point, I'm, I'm done adding a door. You're done adding a door. Nice. And that's it. Super Very easy. Very easy to set, to set up and program. <laughs> so now we'll just click save and then go back down. All right. So the next thing is elevators now. So this is in version 2.13 with elevators. So it's again, as simple as adding a normal door. So I click the plus icon next to elevators and type in that same serial number. So once you type that out and click add, it will prompt this following screen here. So it's exactly like adding a normal door. So you give that elevator a name, you set the strike time, you set the strike delay, that reader protocol. Again, it still has those two onboard outputs that you can also give custom names to. And then if you'd like to include in lockdown, you have door sensors uh, options and a Rex option as so well. So configuring an elevator door is just as easy as configuring a normal X1, but now I see at the bottom, you get to start talking about floors. So let's yes. talk about that. So now as soon as you've get, you filled out the rest up there on the top, you will click floors. So you would simply hit the plus icon on floors. I've already done so here. And this will bring up your first elevator module. So that'll be the name of that first module. And then it'll show your 10 relays here. And so then these you are can, my 10 floors. So these are your 10 floors. So it's as easy as just naming those floors. You can either keep it simple, name it floor one, two, three, et cetera. Or if it's a building with multiple businesses per floor, you can go in and uh, add their names. Add it their looks names. like that's there what you you've go. done so far. <laughs> so I filled out nice. a few here. Then you click save and you're done. So, so, and then if I add another module, I just add another module that would show up. Exactly. And so I would just go ahead and name those and you just keep scaling out up to 90 floors per X1. Per X1. So you'd have an X1 in every elevator shaft, we'll say. Exactly. Um, but then you manage the floors. So from there, what's next? So from there, the next thing we'll talk about is card formats. So DMP's card format is pre-populated on with every single system. So if you purchase cards from us, then this won't even have to be a worry. But okay. if you're doing a system takeover, uh, maybe using the X18s or something like that, and your customer already has a bunch of credentials, you can then just click the plus icon on card formats, type in if it's customer's old cards, so you might just name it that, whatever the old Yeah, whatever are. it is. <laughs> and then you can fill in the rest. And if they require a side code, you can do that. Multiple you can side have codes, nice. Up to eight different custom card formats per site. Okay. So touching down here is the outputs as well. So outputs, very, very simple. You click the plus icon and then you select that X1 that's gonna be associated with this output. So then you can click the door. I've got two on my system right now, but I went ahead and created one here for my side door. So I've connected my outputs to my side door. I've given that output board a name. So I named it building A. And again, it's gonna give you a list of 10 different relays. Now for my specific system, I only have four relays set up. So mm -hmm. those four are the only things that are gonna show up on virtual keypad. So you don't have to worry about having just 10 show up you Basically, know, to your customer, keypad. we're just going to show them what you programmed. They're right. not going to have any excessive information that doesn't apply to them, right. that they don't need to worry about. This means that they're not going to call you with questions about right. that. Right, because if they try confused. to click something that's non-existent, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we eliminate that confusion. Nice. So you hit save and you're done there. And now right. finally on dealer admin is video services. Yep. So if you use our SecureCom cameras and NVRs, <laughs> or our video doorbells, or any of our third-party integrators. So we've got OpenEye, HackVision, Eagle Eye, DW, or our latest partner, Hanwha, you can enable those there as well. And so those just set up, those are, I mean, they all vary a little bit, but uh, they're very easy to set up. You have the option with some to be locally connected where you're going down in the MBR. The other ones are cloud managed, so it's a cloud to cloud integration, but those integrations are all free with our third party partners. And so those allow your customer to not only manage their X1, but at any given moment, they can log in and they can see their cameras through that integration mm -hmm. partner. So if it's digital watchdog or Hanwha, they can log in and see their cameras, they can scroll back through history, they can see the live view. And so that's really a nice feature to add. It just makes it so that they can actually do their day-to-day -day operations all from one app. That's right. Yeah. So before jumping over to Virtual Keypad, I just wanna point out the option that John was saying earlier. Now, Virtual Keypad is very easy for your customers to manage those doors, but 
if it's somebody that you know doesn't feel comfortable for whatever reason it is, um, they can call you and you can help them maybe set up a user or a group or something like that. You can log on to dealer admin and if you have permission, then you can log in as a customer under that customer system and then help them out that way. So let's go ahead and show you virtual keep at first here. And here we go. So again, so while is, he logs in, I just, this is virtual mm -hmm. keypad browser. So if your customers choose to manage it from a laptop or a tablet and they want to log in through a browser, uh, this is how it'd be done. But if they want to use the app, the virtual keypad app, everything that we're about to show you is able to be managed through that as well. So that's right. Oh, I'm sorry. So I am using, <laughs> all good. So I am on the virtual keypad browser version. And as you can see here on my home screen, I can view some recent events. I can view also the doors in my system as well. So like I said, I've got two right now, but maybe I've got multiple doors and I don't want them cluttering up my home screen and I wanna just favorite specific ones. So say I just wanna use my side door most often. So I click apply and that side door will be the only thing showing there. Now I can go back in, put that parking lot gate again and then both my doors will show up and then I can just go in, unlock a door remotely, lock it again or allow for temporary access. Then also we have a little drop down arrow with view events. So if there's a specific event that you're looking for that happened at that given door, mm -hmm. you can go in and view those right then and there. And you can even search by keywords. So if it's a specific user, I can type in Kevin and then Kevin's events will show up there at that door. And Quentin mentioned this earlier, but think, I think it's worth reiterating it, that we store for your user a yep. year's worth of events on every door. So on any given day, they're always able to go back a year. Now, you'll touch on reports here in a little bit, right. but they can even schedule reports to be sent to them. And in those reports, they'll have that information beyond a year. But live logging in, they'll have access to a year's worth of events anytime. That's right. So let's go ahead and just dive into our groups. We're going to create a group here uh, just to give them some specific ske uh, access schedules and things like that. So let's go ahead and do, let's say, finance office. Perfect. So these are going to be the people that work at the finance office in my building. So I can go in and add a door to them. So I'll go ahead and just give them access to the side door and let's do the parking lot gate as well. Hit apply and you're done. You've added doors to that group. It's that simple. Now our finance office has a specific floor to building. So we want to give them access to that floor off, of course. So I can edit floors. And then I can go in and look for my finance wing. And those names are showing six. up. This is basically how and you this, programmed it in Dealer Admin, which is exactly. very simple to do. Exactly. So they have access to pull into the gate, park, park in their car, come through the side door, and now they have elevator access to floor six. Exactly. So now not only do they have access to those doors and that floor, we can add a schedule and, and give them specific time permissions for those uh, doors and elevators. So if I click here, maybe it's, uh, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on a Monday through mm -hmm. Friday during a normal workday. We can set that up there. But then maybe on a Saturday, you want to give them access maybe for a half day. Uh, maybe it's from 8 to noon. We can absolutely do that there. And then we also have on any given X140 holidays that, that they get to customize, whatever the holidays are to them, but they categorize in one of three ways. Correct. And then you can manage how that interaction is on the holidays a little bit different. We see that showing up a little bit. That's no right. need to go into it, but... That's right. So yes, three classifications, A, B, and C. You customize how you want those to act. So you can either leave holiday A's as a day that you're closed all day. Maybe holiday B is a late start or mm -hmm. early release. Early, yep. you know, whatever it is, you can customize those to your to meet your customer's needs. And then at the bottom, I do see you have card swipe. So this is just a simple card swipe, but we do support card plus pin. That's right. Um, and so in case they ever need that. Um, and then we also support dual authority. That is two card swipes. So it That's might right. take two people to get in. Um, and then if I needed to, I can adjust these to different hours as well. So I may have some groups that have permission all the time and some that are only limited to Monday through Friday, eight to five. So maybe maintenance right. or janitors that are in that same building, they can go under that floor all the That's time. Right. Whereas these people that work at the finance office, they're just accessible Monday through Friday, eight to five and on Saturdays for a little bit. There's a lot of different, there's a lot of flexibility with yeah. it. We basically leave it to your imagination at this Considering point. Considering that every X1 can only have, I mean, can not only have, but 99 <laughs> schedules. Who That's needs right. more than 99? And per then door. these groups, <laughs> you can have, yeah, per door right. for X1. So, and on these groups, I can have 999 of them. And any one person can have 32 different groups. Uh, to make it even more flexible, I 
think that we can probably meet the needs of whatever it is your customer so wants, too. right? <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. So and then the last function here is the lockdown feature of part of your group. So would you like your finance team to have the ability to initiate or reset a lockdown? You can just enable that right there and you're done. Just click save up on the top right hand side. And that's how easy it is to create a group. There we have it. So the next thing we'll talk about is users. So I've got a couple of users created here, but let's go ahead and just create somebody else. <clears throat> so under first name, maybe we'll just name him Tom and then Smith. Now, if you want to provide an email and there's two reasons why you would, one would be to um, receive any email notifications over maybe a, a specific event that happened, or if you're going to be an app user, you have to have an email on here as well. So let's go ahead and fill that out and then enable has app user. That will bring down the role tab. So now you have two, standard or admin. So the difference between the both are, as an admin, you can do exactly what I've been doing, which is creating groups, setting up schedules. I can also view all the doors in my site. Now as a standard role, you cannot change schedules, you cannot create groups or create users, and you can only view the doors that you have been given permission to see by your group. Mm -hmm. So then you can go and choose photo if you'd like to upload a photo. Now every time you swipe at a reader, it will come up next to the timestamp on the events tab. Nice. But let's go ahead and give Tom a group here. So let's go ahead and add him. He's gonna be part of our finance office and let's say also part of our sales team. Because And again, you can have 32 different groups per user. So lots of room for flexibility there. Now let's give him credentials. So if you've got a simple badge, you can just type in the internal number and external. And but if, you also, have an, if you have an admin reader, if you have then an you admin can swipe reader. that over that. So we have That's a particular right. part number called the 1301 in that just plugs into a laptop and a simple wave of the card pulls that internal number in. Sorry if I'm That's right. stealing your thunder. No, no, there, but good. I just want to make sure. Yeah, That's right. And then also, if you're using mobile credentials, you can also set that up here. So if you've checked out our SR3 Bluetooth reader, uh, this is definitely compatible with the X1 series. And since we just mentioned the SR3, if you're not familiar with the SR3 Bluetooth reader, um, you need to get familiar with it. It's awesome. You're able to uh, purchase the credentials through dealer admin and then assign them to a customer. And then the customer just logs in and says, hey, here's the credentials. And now those people have the virtual keypad app on their phone, they can just walk up. They don't have to wave the phone or anything like that. They just wave their hand in front of a reader. Mm -hmm. So even if that phone is in a pocket, in a bag, in a briefcase, in a purse, this customer just walks up, waves their hand in front of the reader, it sees it, it's them, and it lets them in. So that's a separate topic for a separate day, <laughs> but right. uh, it's a very powerful product. It is. So going back to our credentials here, you can also set Tom Smith, my, us my new user, as a temporary. Uh, user here. So if I enable temporary, we can make it start on a specific date. So maybe he's coming in, do some work on Monday, and then he can leave that Friday. I can hit apply. And now I don't have to worry about Tom having access to my doors outside of the time slot that he's been given. So I hit apply there. There's your temporary. So now that I've given Tom my credentials, I can simply go up to the top, hit save, and you're done. So that's how easy it is to set up a user for your end users. Now the next topic that I wanna talk about is rules. So rules are set up in an if this, then that type scenario. Makes it very easy to comprehend for your customers. So if I name, let's say here, let's just do miscellaneous because I'll show you a few different examples here. So I can set if there's a, let's say access granted on a specific door, so then we choose the side door. It can be by a specific user even, or just any user in general. So if I do any user, then I can have it, a, have it do a couple of different things. I can have it send a notification, initiate a lockdown, but I can also have it turn an output on. So when we set up on dealer admin, we set up some, some outputs with our side door. So then I can pick and choose all of those outputs that are available to us. So then maybe on an access granted, I want the hallway light to turn on. And then we also added a feature that you can even turn off that light after a specific amount of time. So you can, if you leave a blank, it'll just stay on, but you can even set it for, you know, after 16 minutes, I want it to turn off. Mm -hmm. And you can even set this up on a schedule. So if you wanna, want it to be 24 seven, 365, you just leave a blank like this. But if it's only during a specific time frame that you want this, um, action to so I can say happen. look if it's turning yeah. on a light we don't need to do that during the daytime we can just right. do that you know at after 9 p.m. that's right nice and then if you've got a uh, let's say a different type of rule whether it's a door propped on that side door you can have it send you a notification 
Mm -hmm. And then you can have it set during maybe a specific business hour. Now, if we put on the event as send a notification. Now we get to choose who is going to receive these notifications. So if I scroll down here, I can hit add recipients. Then I, there's a couple of my users there. So I can add Kevin, I've got Bill Nye, hit done. Now I've got multiple users there. And again, I can have as many recipients as I want on this to receive these notifications. And I can also pick and choose the means of communication as well. So if maybe I wanna receive a text message and a push notification from Virtual Keypad, I can do that. But maybe Bill just wants to receive an email, I can set that up there as well. You know what's nice about that flexibility is that you have customers who don't provide company phones to their employees. And so they don't feel like they can mandate that an app be loaded on their employee's personal phones, which means they can't get a push notification. Mm -hmm. But you can send them a text message or you can send them an email. So we provide all those different mechanisms for them to be able to receive that information. So it's really nice. It allows you to meet the customer's needs uh, in those situations where they want people to be notified, but they aren't providing company phones. That's right. Yeah. So after we talked about rules here, we'll jump over to auto lock and unlock. So these are very straightforward. You can set it up, let's say here during business hours. And then you can have a specific door open at a specific time. And the same thing with floors of an elevator as well. So if I choose all my doors and then I can even make it to where it's every single floor or any specific floors, I can go in and choose. So Monday through Friday, eight to five, if I've got visitors, yep. they can come into the building or the doors are unlocked. But then also once they get on that elevator, they can just go to those floors. So, you know, it's not about the employees, it's about the visitors to those businesses. That's right. And you can set up a bunch of these. Exactly, yeah. so you can set up multiple, and then this also gives you another option for those holiday dates yeah. as well. But that's how simple it is. And any single X1 can have up to 99 different schedules. That's right. So that all being said, I just wanna reiterate that everything you're doing is loaded in all the X1s. So all the credentials, all the rules that you just showed, all of the groups, all of the schedules, whether that's access or auto lock on, they're all loaded in every X1. And it's important for you to know this because you know there's some products out there that if the panel loses network connectivity, they'll work in, they don't wanna call it this, but this is what it is, a degraded mode, meaning it'll still work to some degree, maybe 50 of the codes will work or some of the schedules will work, but not everything. And so with X1, everything works if they lost network connectivity for a while everything's going to continue to work it knows who to let in who to let to what floor what rules to trigger um, and all of those events are saved so that once that network is restored it can send all of that to us nothing is lost and these are for issues where you might not have been able to add a cell backup a lot of the products in the market in this cloud managed access control space don't even have cell as an option so we have sell as an option. You can even go sell only, which further eliminates that possibility. Or some products out there want you to go ahead and connect it to some third party device, such as a cradle point or whatnot, which is extremely expensive. And so we always bring it back to two things. Not only is it flexible and easy to do, but everything is stored locally and we have that sell option as a backup or sell only. And it's at a very, very low monthly rate. Sorry, right. I'll let you continue. Absolutely, so the final thing we're gonna talk about here is the events tab. And under the events tab, we've got live events and also our reports. So let's talk about the events. Now here, as, as John mentioned earlier, you can scroll back to an entire year's worth of events. And that's per door. And that's per that's door. every door. So I can also simply go in and look uh, for specific events by keyword. So if it is Kevin, because I know I've got some events there, maybe it's a side door, I can just type in side. Those are gonna come up there. So it makes it very easy to find specific events. Then I can back off of those ones there. Now, if I wanna look for maybe an outreader, I can type in out and I can see my access to a specific door from the out reader. So it makes it very, very simple and you can differ differentiate between what reader was swiped at. So whether it's an in reader or an out reader because the X1 does support an in and an so out. So I can search just by keyword for any event that's taken place and any combination of those words is gonna narrow that search and I've got access to a year's worth. Now, show exactly. me what you're showing me right there with that add card, I see that pop Exactly, up. so this is a great feature that we have with the X1. So. Say I've got a contractor coming in, he's doing some work for about a week and I need to give this person credentials. So I can simply take a card and I'm not sure if this is in the system or not. So I can walk up to my closest reader, say I, you know, I don't have my enrollment reader, yep. I don't have the paper, whatever it is. I just walk up to a reader, swipe at it. And since it's not in the system, it will come up as invalid. 
but it will give you that number right here, which is the internal code of that specific card. Now this card. is if you're an admin login, so yes. not everybody sees it, but those administrators can see that. Yep, so it's as easy as click add card, you type in that card's external, you can set that person as temporary or not, but then hit apply, and then that will bring you to that new user screen, go ahead and fill in the rest, give them a group, but the credentials are already set there for them. So it's just another way of being able to add credentials. To so with X1, I mean, literally any reader can be that enrollment reader. Right. You don't need to use a specific one. You don't need to buy that. If they did buy an enrollment reader and they lose it, it's no big deal. I just literally can say, you know what, I'm bringing in a contractor or I'm hiring an employee, grab the closest card at, that I've got in my desk, swipe it at the closest reader, and boom, I'm done. Exactly, nice. exactly. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is reports. So reports can be created by any type of event, whether it's alarms, troubles, access denies, or door statuses. So I can create one here, let's say access denied. Now I can choose a specific time frame of what when I wanna see the access denied. Do I wanna see just today's, yesterday's, we have some preset templates, or you can customize it to go as far back as you need to at a specific time, and then we click event, so this is an access denied, so we'll leave it as door access. Now you can see all those access denies at a specific door or all my doors. So if there's you know, maybe a specific user you wanna see that have specific access to one or two doors, but you wanna see where else maybe they're trying to uh, get into, you can check that. So if I leave that as all doors and I go to my users, I created Tom Smith earlier, if you remember. Mm -hmm. So he has access to maybe a specific door, but I wanna see where else he's trying to go to. So I can take off granted, leave it as denied, and I can click run report, and then I will get So that. on the reports, I can be as, as wide as just, I wanna see everything on all my doors, or I can say, I wanna see a specific event on a specific door by a specific person, right. and I can run that anytime. Now, there's only one thing better than being able to run it anytime you want, and that's okay. having it delivered to you. Having it delivered to you mm -hmm. on a schedule, that's right. So the next thing here is the scheduled option. So if I click that, you can choose how often you wanna receive this report, whether it's every day or every week. So if you choose every week, you choose the day of the week. If it's every month, you choose that day of the month as well. So if maybe you've got a, an important meeting every single Monday and you need to have specific reports mm -hmm. on hand, just set up a schedule for it and then you don't have to worry about this it. This is really important for your uh, customers that really want auditing or need auditing. They're audited by somebody or they need to turn in certain reports on a weekly, monthly basis and such. They're always gonna have access to this. So rather than having to go run it, they can just go set it up one time and know that it's gonna arrive in their inbox on that scheduled time for them to go ahead and provide to the auditors or whatever that need is. So just set it up one time, forget it. You're gonna get it delivered to you every time exactly what you need. Exactly. And you can choose that format as well, whether it's Excel or PDF, and then choose that recipient as well. And they don't even have to be in the system. So it could be an auditor elsewhere, mm -hmm. not in the system. They can go in, you just add that email on there and they'll be able to receive this report. Nice at their frequency. So that is how easy it is for yeah. your customers to be able to manage all those doors, create groups, schedules, things elevators, like that. Outputs. Elevators, outputs, everything. So, you know, I hope that we, um, first of all, thanks again for spending time with us, but I hope we've done a good job of explaining, look, the X1 is the easiest to install and set up product in the market for cloud managed access control. We're really excited to bring it to you. This is something that our dealers have asked for from us. And then we've also seen that there's products in the market that do work in this space, but they don't provide the robust features that most access control companies and their customers needs. And so we wanted to address all of those. And so you see that in the X1, you've got the X18, we can have up to a thousand doors per system. Mm -hmm. We've got the elevator module. So any single X1 can do up to 90 floors um, of elevator control, up to 90 outputs of output control. We've showed you how easy it is to manage. Your customers can add users, they can add their schedules. And again, I know I, I've said it a few times, can't say it enough. <laughs> We've got the sell only option. Uh, so you can go sell only, which means that any door that can have electricity can be an access control door. And then, and this is extremely important, both to you as the alarm company or the access control company and your customer, that in the event of some network outage, everything is loaded in the doors. This means you're not gonna get service calls needing to go out. They're not gonna be stressed out about getting it working. Everything keeps working. And then once they get their network back up and going, you know what, then you'll get all those messages. Nothing gets yeah. lost. And that's if you didn't take advantage of the sell, sell option, which maybe they'll wanna do after a, a scenario like mm -hmm. that. But I hope that we've done a good job of explaining to you how simple it is, uh, how scalable it is, how flexible it is, 
and then how much your customers are going to love it. We've had a lot of customers reach out uh, to their provider and they've shared it with us that they've said this is the easiest access control platform that you they've ever worked with. So that being said, um, I do want to show you if you have any more questions, we do want the chance to speak with you. We didn't go into pricing on this. You'll find that our pricing is extremely competitive, um, both on the hardware and the monthly. So if you want to learn more, uh, please go ahead. And, I think we've got a slide here. Um, reach out to Quentin, Kevin, or myself. Uh, you'll see on the map, if you're located in the dark gray area, you can reach out to Quentin Booth. Um, if you're in the lighter gray area, you can reach out to Kevin McDonald. If you go to our website, you'll see links to this and you can just schedule a time with them. If you click on the link, it'll let you pick a time that they're available that works for you. And once you pick it, it'll automatically let them know. And we love getting to show it to you. So if you want to know more about X1, you want to know about the pricing and the uh, for both on the hardware and the monthly, give us a call or We'd love to show this to the rest of your team. If there's people in your company that may not have seen this webinar uh, that you think need to know about it, uh, we'd really appreciate the opportunity to show that to them. Uh, yeah. So once again, sorry, I thought you were saying no. something. Uh, so once again, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for doing business with DMP and giving us the opportunity to share some time with you. Have a great day and be safe out there. Thank you.